Well, hello guys. It's been a heck of a morning so far. This video is going to be about the 4955, pulling this front steer axle out and then pulling the uh, steering arm off and resealing that. Uh, we'll pull our tie rod ends off out here and then I'll pull the front drive line and I'll have to get this thing blocked up here on the frame rail uh, with some jack stands and we'll uh, we'll go ahead and uh, drop the front end out from under it, roll the whole thing out. I'll probably end up pulling these counterweights off. That way it's just easier to clear them when I come out from underneath it. Oh, boy, uh, this morning we had a, let's see here, what did I, I'm trying to remember all the crap just this morning. It's only three o'clock and it's just been one thing after another. Uh, First thing I did is I, I there's a case Puma down there with case Puma 170 down there that I had to pull the uh, shuttle lever out. The neutral button on the end was wasn't working, and uh, I've done a lot of MXM 175s and New Holland T7030s, but that Puma, I mean, I ended up having to pull the floor mat. They've got a joystick that the, they put they bought a loader for that tractor and somebody made the joystick mount and they bolted it to the rubber floor mat they bolted it they just drilled holes right through the rubber warm rubber floor mat and then they put nuts on the bottom side of the cab frame there on the bottom so it was just a kind of a pain in the ass getting that floor mat and all that shit out of there then they where the cable and the wires for the joystick run down through the floor mat and through the cab they just drilled holes i would have done it a little different i probably would have i probably would have cut a big square slot out of that floor mat and had all my stuff run through that just the sheet, you know, just the just the metal. That way, when I take the floor mat out, I just have to drag it, you know, out like a regular floor mat instead of fighting it like that. I mean, it just I was a little bit perturbed seeing that the way they did that. But, so I did that, and then I had a Ford L9000 with an N14 Cummins in it. We put a throttle position sensor in it and went and test drove it. Everything turned out okay on that. And then this uh, 2001 Ford with the 5.4 Triton in it blew a spark plug out of the hole, and uh, I've got that special tool. I've got two of them. One of them is like a, kind of an off-brand thing. The other one's a Mac Tool Kit, and, and I had the off-brand kit, which is a nice kit actually. Um, I'll show it to you. Right, it's right in here. I don't even know what the name of it is, but the other one's a Mac Tool Kit, and that that kit's up in at my other my little shop at my house, and. This one here is here. This one here was the one I had at this shop, but it's still. I mean, I don't know if it's really off band. This kit cost me like five hundred dollars. I remember that, but uh, it's it's a nice kit. The only thing is, I didn't uh, I didn't really like about it is when I screwed the reamer in the other tool. If you read the directions on this one. You basically use the drill assembly with a half inch ratchet and extension to drill clear through the remaining threads and enlarge the hole to accept the sleeve, then remove drill. Okay, so this is your drill assembly right here. Well, uh, as you can see, what happened is on this drill assembly, I don't know if the metal from the shavings got up between this and the intake manifold or this, you know, the countersunk part of the hole there where the plug boot goes in the intake or the cylinder head but you can see where it got it got hung up in there because usually i don't pull the intake to do them well i got this damn thing in there and i couldn't get it out i got it although you know i drilled all the way down the the other set the other tool kit comes with the this on the other tool kit actually goes down in the hole this one doesn't go in the hole you lay it up there on the cylinder head like that and then you drill down through it and then but when you're drilling the other kit you put this in the hole on the other kit and then the drill only goes so far till it bottoms out here <clears throat> but on this one here you don't I mean I just followed the directions it was the first time I've used this kit but I just followed the directions and it doesn't say anything about putting the stop in there so I, I just followed the directions so and then you go to number three as you can see the, the stops in it on number three so, um, yeah, anyway, after I got the the uh, reamer out, it was fine. I mean, everything was just, but I, I had to pull the whole intake. I could not, it was on the number, 
one, two, number three hole kind of towards the back, and I just couldn't get a hold of it to, to get it out of there. So I ended up, you know, I thought, shit, let's just pull the intake on it. But I ended up pulling the intake manifold and hooking onto it with a pair of vice grips and popping it out of there with a getting a bar into the vice grips and popping it out of there. But uh, then, you, then you take this, uh, oh, let's see here. You take this tool here. You take one of your inserts. At, well, actually, I'm, I'm getting a little bit ahead. Take the take the uh, stop. Put the stop up on the hole and kind of line it up with the angle. You know, you're gonna those holes will be canted one way, and thread the hole. And then you you thread the hole till this bottoms uh, on here, and then uh, you pull that back out of there, and then you take this tool here. Let's see if I can get lay this here maybe okay and then you'll you'll take this like this thread it on there till it stops it'll come up against this fluted part here and then take you some some of this uh, anaerobic adhesive basically Loctite and uh, screw it in there till it's either sixty thousandths or flush with the uh, with the stop Leave the stop on there, and then you unscrew this, and this will stay in there. It should anyway. And then you take a swedger, and you leave the stop in there. And then you take that swedger, go down through there like that. Actually, this will be in like this. And then you'll swedge it till that white line is right to the top. Pretty much. Let me turn this the right way here. Pretty much about like that, right there. That's what I did. Pretty much to where it was just flush with it, like that, to where I could see the white line above it. That's what it shows in the picture, anyway. And uh, you pull this, you pull the swedger out of it, and then you just—I uh, I actually went to lunch. I wanted my Loctite to kind of seat up, and then I came back and I put the spark plug in it and put the intake manifold and all that stuff back on it and. Of course when the coilover plug when the spark plug did blow out of the hole it snapped the ear off on the coilover plug that holds it to the intake manifold and so I put a new coil in it too and she she runs pretty good so got it all back together usually that takes me about an hour to do one of those but that one with the stupid reamer sticking in the hole took me about four hours to do but I mean you're better off to not tear something else up trying to get the reamer out. Let's see how that thing runs. Kind of like their shifter, that's kind of neat. Sounds like a 5.4 Triton. They're kind of turd gutless gat and they, they're kind of gas hog engines but you know what they can run a long time the uh, strawberry nursery i used to work for we had a whole fleet of them that guy was a, a big time ford guy the old guy that owned that place and shit and he had a whole bunch of those five fours and four sixes and i remember some of them were 97 98s with four sixes in them and they had four or five hundred thousand miles and you know they they were bought as brand new pickups by the company but by the time They'd got a few miles on them. The plant salesman or the, some of the manager, managerial personnel had them. They handed them down, and to eventually they got to where they were like an irrigation pickup, and the field crew was driving around. But shoot, they were still eh, a couple of them. I had to do some cylinder head jobs on and stuff. But other than that, timing chains every once in a while. You know the typical blowing spark plugs out of the hole thing. And uh, other than that, they were shit, man. I mean, the fuel mileage sucks on them. They don't got any power, but they run a long time. Well, I guess I better go get some stands. And I'm going to go ahead and pull these counterweights off and throw them on the ground, which I just love doing. We'll zip them off. Hey, I got the counterweights off, and I got one side. I do that turn the wheel to the left. And I... Then I get my cotter pin out and get my tie rod in loose. 
I'm going to turn the wheel to the right now and do the other cotter pin and take the nut loose and knock the tie rod out there. I'll have to jack it up to get the wheel straight when I pull. I'm going to get that one out. Might have to jack it up to get it out. Sometimes they get kind of a twist on them. There it goes. Yeah, it just kind of hung up in there. Let's turn the wheel over to the right. Oh, it's hitting that. Pull back the other way. funny now don't she
okay set her down tractor needs some engine work I just got an injection pump or an injector problem or something that don't run very good I told him about it I got a feeling I'll be seeing this one later this summer with power shift problems because you know I had shit silvery I don't know kind of silvery looking shit in the oil and didn't look so nice on there and kind of protect those threads anyway. I'll take that other one and put them on there and see if you're going to drive lines at 3 8 or 7 16 12 point straps. Okay, let me go find a 3 8 12 point, get the drive line out of it, get her jacked up off the ground, get the wheel straightened out. And I've uh, what I've done on these is I actually take the tie rods and tie them together. It keeps the wheels kind of half ass straight. And once we get them jacked up off the ground to where we can drop this, we'll have to take these two bolts out here and and basically raise it up some more to where we can just drop it down and we'll stick the forks with the forklift underneath it and because uh, what usually likes to happen is it's going to be pinion heavy and they'll want to go like that on you and I just take the forks on the forklift and stick underneath it with a block of wood across here usually and right underneath this and usually just kind of walk them right out from underneath it <laughs> parts this morning for the old 4955 here. I gotta go in there. I got the pinion steering gear and the bearing and the seal and all that shit inside. Let's see here what they got for us. There's my o-ring. There's my seal. This should be the bearing. Stopped there this morning and help an old friend there, a rancher there that I've known my whole life. And old guy, he sure is a hard worker. He's in his, oh, he's got to be damn near mid 60s, late 60s, approaching 70 by now, I think. But 
he just leased a whole other place. He's by himself. He don't have any health. He's kind of like me. <laughs> the bad thing about him is his wife's got Alzheimer's. And I just feel feel really bad for the guy. He's he's just we were sitting there talking and he's gonna have to get he's gonna have to hire somebody to start watching her and taking care of her. She just can't. You know, she just can't hardly function. He's constantly got to help her, and oh, it's just a bad deal. I've known her too, and you hate seeing somebody start losing their mind like that. It's just terrible. Uh, anyway, I, he called me, and he's he's got a bunch of grain and stuff planted, and he's moving wheel lines on it. And his old he wanted to do the irrigation to go out there to move the wheel line mover with his his old Kate. He's got. A, he told me he had a KX-175 dirt bike, and I'm like, 175? That's an old-timer, and I went up there, and, and he says, yeah, the god dang thing don't want to, it only runs on a choke. I said, yeah, the idle jet's plugged up, and it's full of shit. It's been sitting for a while. So I went out there and looked at it, and it was a, it was an old thing. What do you say, like, 74 or something like that? He goes, yeah, I bought that brand new, 1974. <laughs> Fuck, I was born in 75. <laughs> And uh, I pulled the damn thing apart. The, the carburetor, I, I've never worked on a dirt bike that old, but the, you know, the right, where the right hand side where the Kickstarter is, there's a cover there, and the carburetor was actually up inside that cover on the right hand side. And I just cleaned it all out and took it apart and cleaned it out and put it back together. And oh, shit, what am I doing? I gotta get this, uh, yeah, anyway, got it, got it running like a top, so. Ah, alrighty, so there's my new bearing. Alright, okay, so I gotta go press that other bearing off, take the snap ring off, press it off the shaft. Even the things fired up this morning here. The goddamn case. They said they can't get a, a shuttle lever for that thing for like two weeks. I, it's just unbelievable. That's a Puma 170, that's not a very old tractor. It's only two or three years old. Okay, guys. Um, I just want to show you something before we time this and put this steering gear back in. Okay, you got two rack kind of rack racks in here, steering gears, okay? These are hydraulically driven off your steering valve. Okay, to time this correctly, if you say if you were gonna pull the the complete steering gear out, pull the side frames and all that stuff out of there, and you were gonna do this, you would take this this steering rack gear here and you would you want to put it against the left hand stop and you want to put the rear one which is right there you want to put it against the right hand stop or what I should have done and I just forgot I used to do them when I I used to work on these 49 60s and 49 55s and all these a lot more than I do now and I just forgot about it and uh, you can you'll have to take your lines off of your steering valve okay uh, and and take a bar and try to get in the middle of this with a bar and then move this gear clear to the left hand side till it stops and then the right one the back one to the right hand stop okay so see this little notch in here when you're doing a steering gear replacement or rebuilding one of these you can rotate this down to where there's a feedback piston that goes in the back of this a little pin that goes in the back of this that runs off the feedback piston. Well, you can rotate that down to pop this notch out. So, what I want to say is be very careful, and I've done it before, and if you do do it, don't panic, you know, it, it, can, it can be fixed. I've, I've forgotten a, a, at one time before on a 4960, and I was moving this gear over by hand, and this gear, it rotates. This will rotate in the shaft, in the hollow tube. It'll rotate in there. It's, it's a piston in there. And that son of a bitch rotated on me, and uh, the feedback piston popped above. Now I'll have to show you. Down that service manual, it's easier to show you. But, you know, take your four steering lines off here. I got something here to catch the oil. But what you should do is when you do this, take and go full left till it stops. And that's where you're going to be in time at, is full left. Um, I just forgot all about it. It's called shitting your brain out, but anyway, it's no big deal. So, let's go, I'll show you a picture of what I'm talking about in this old 4955 book. 
Okay, see, so there's the pin I'm talking about right there. It's got a spring behind it. This tapered end will go in this notch. This is your steering motor piston right here. These are your feedback pistons here. Okay. See that hole in the end of that shaft, in that right in the middle of that? That goes in there where the spring, in, the spring end, and that goes in there. And what it'll do when it rotates up, rotating down is not that big of a deal. So if you rotate it up, it'll pop up above this. And you got to get a screwdriver and get it centered back in that channel again, and try to get your this piston here centered too by gritting the bar and moving it. And then you got to take a screwdriver or something. And a pair of needle nose, I took some long needle nose pliers, is what I did, and I just wedged it up and then took a screwdriver and shoved underneath it. And then I took this gear here and rotated it back to where it popped in the groove. And it's not it's not too big a deal. It takes a little bit of patience, but it took me about 20 minutes on that one there that I did here last year, I think. Last year I did that, I forgot about to do the and then I went to time it and said, shit, i got to move those to the stops to time it right. But Anyway, that's how you can do that if you get into that. Don't panic. It's not too big of a deal. Um, all right. What we want to do here is get a clean rag. Now it's hot. We should have done this inside. I guess I should have pulled the duels off of it and just pulled it inside. Gotta fill this cavity full of oil. Okay. You're gonna have a narrow bolt pattern and a wide bolt pattern. I'm pretty sure if I remember right, the narrow bolt pattern goes towards the front. Yes. Your timing marks here will go towards the front. Make your steering gear, pinion gear. Gently slide it in there, trying not to tear your seal of all this shit. Okay, where's my four three eighths bolts at? That would be nice and handy to have them about right now. Okay, so what the shit did I do with those? I'll just stay where it's supposed to. Okay, where the fuck are those at? Those are my goddamn line here. Now they're behind us. Okay. So I've got those against my stops. Remember the front, the front piston's gonna go against your left hand stop and the back piston goes against your right hand stop. turned a little bit on me. Basically this V here on the end of the pinion is going to face this mark on the housing right here. There's a mark right above this line. this a little bit that's what it's doing I need to get it down a little bit some way somehow <sighs> forced my pickup in the shade because I thought well the doggies don't want to don't want to lay in the shade and the damn dogs went and laid in the damn underneath that rig there they're still in the shade though but I figured they'd be wanting to lay in there it's a little cougar in there
There it goes. Okay. It looks fairly square. Alright, let's see what we got here. Oh, this little prick's heavy. Damn it. Ah, just kind of a morphodite setup. They are. Try to keep from pinching my O-ring and tearing my seal up I just put in there. As you can see, our V mark here on the end of the pinion is lined up with the mark here, and this mark's lined up with this mark. They're all in line with each other. Okay, so tighten your bolts up here. I torque these 35 foot pounds or 3 8 bolts. And then, uh, okay, now on the end of the pinion, or the end of the pinion, the quill. See these marks here. Okay, what do I do with my big washer? Because I need to stick this on there. Let's put this on my hat. Don't have a choice. Damn it, I had my big washer there. Now, what we're going to do is line these marks up with this mark right here. be lined up with it right there. Okay. Alright. Now what's the I don't remember what the torque is on that. I know you get to torque it down, then you beat on it with a hammer, and then you torque it again. And... Okay, so yeah. Okay, align the V mark C on the spindle dash, mark A on the housing. Supposed to be in line with all of them, I think. Yeah, I did screw up. Carefully slide quill the over spindle with its dash mark B in line with two other timing marks. Tighten spindle quill, scratch two stroke. Yeah, I screwed up. See? God dang it. Got it 180 degrees out. Take those hash marks and just line it up with the V and the other two diamond marks. Just like that. Now we got it. Alright. Alright. I don't know what the hell that mark over there is supposed to be for then. not very good okay everything's lined up you got your mark on your housing mark A it's lined up with mark B and then there's the mark on the yeah 
the V mark, which is C. All right, everything's in line. All right, carefully select with the uh, salt spindle arm lock, washer and plug plate and cap screw. 300 foot pounds, strike hub on spindle arm several times with a lead hammer. Well, I don't have a fucking lead hammer. I got a big rubber mallet. That's about the best I'm gonna be able to do. And uh, torque it again. All right. Fill spindle cavity with oil. We'll have to do that here in a little bit. 300 foot pounds. Rubber mallet and whack it. Ah. Ah. Where is my big clown hammer? I don't know if that. Uh, If you don't pull those steering lines up and you're trying to move those pistons with a bar, what's going to happen is the oil that comes off one side of the piston goes back through the loop, comes back through the valve through the other line, and this makes the other piston move. So you'll move one and the other one will move like that. Move one, move the other one like that. That's why you have to undo those lines so the oil just comes out and squirts in the bucket and one piston moves and the other one stays still. That's why, that's why I said you got to pull those lines off. Definitely made a difference, didn't it? Right. Well, 300. Yeah, well, Definitely made a difference, I guess, hitting it with a hammer. or something about ready to break on me. Our steering lines back up here. Fuck. What the hell today? Had a good day yesterday. 
Washington in and the next day he's just told shit. Wish I'd have done this something bitch inside. So come on out here. Start the tractor up while it's sitting on the box and, and uh, turn it back and forth, make sure it doesn't leak. Well, we stick that whole front end back up underneath and then find out that something's still leaking on it. I wonder, I'm gonna have to ask him if he's got, if he's got a rear main seal or something leaking in back into the transmission or something. That oil's awful dark looking. I mean, it's black. You're starting to, if you're having to add a bunch of, engine oil to one of these 50 series or 55 series with a power shift more than likely you can't figure out where it's going it's going back into the transmission we'll check your transmission level and see if it's over full Alright, so now I gotta pick up some of this shit and fill this cavity full of oil.
over. Side. Here's the bucket. Oh, fuck, something's falling. Something's falling on me. Gravity sure can't screw with you, can it? Well, you have to deal with seeing me on the other side of the tire on over there. I'm gonna go drive this thing. Make sure we have no leaks. And I'll probably come back in the morning. I gotta go look at an 8420. I just got cold on it. It's got engine knocking going on in it. Don't sound good. Don't sound good. <laughs> pressure and stuff on this thing last year. Oh, I forgot. Glad I had my head out of my ass. The LED light bar I stuck inside the wheel.
can't say old versus new. The newer style tractors, there's a lot more visibility in the cab, a lot more glass. makes me want to just park out there in the shade somewhere and take a nap. That's why I don't think in my older age I'd make a very good tractor driver or a truck driver because I'd be going to sleep. I'd almost need an open station tractor and be eating dirt all day so I could stay awake. Now nobody wants to do that anymore. We used to do everything on old D4 cats, farm cats. Got the coil there in a ditch. Boy, that 15th to 14th is a hell of a jump, isn't it? got all kinds of monitors and shit in this thing. There's moisture tester there. And fiber radiation. Okay, that's for the bale accumulator on the big baler. And that must be the monitor for the baler up there. Uh, no, that's a scale or some damn thing. Uh, weight. Scale, yeah, sale, average total weight, some kind of scale. This has got to be the monitor for the baler, I would think. You got a couple of them like BB960 New Holland big balers. I, he, he had that, he's got two of them, and that that one he had it like brand new, and it lasted like didn't even make it through first cutting. And the gearbox went out on it, and the gearbox was in France or some damn thing. And it was like a two month ordeal getting it over here. I mean, it was a nightmare. He was pissed. He wasn't very happy with New Holland over that entire situation. Oh, he's waiting on me. 
Where'd you go, Dad? They do not like being left behind. Two dogs are so damn good. Loyal as loyal can be, man. There's old Duke. <laughs> Happy to see me. Okay, let's see if we got anything leaking here. Oh, that's grease. That's grease there coming out of the bowl joint. Here up here is what I'm concerned about. That all looks good. He looks good, Dookie. He looks good, partner. Let's put our tools up and go look at an 8420. All right, guys. There's the steering gear on that thing. You got that done. I don't really like doing those. They're just kind of a pain in the ass. But... Oh, well. I'm a typical mechanic. I don't like doing any of this shit half the time. All right, guys. Thanks for watching.